Hello and welcome back to the EG Reading Rounds. Today I will cover burst suppression pattern on the EEG and generalized periodic epileptiform discharges. Let's start with a quick orientation. So on the left side you see all the odd numbers in the first four channels. So as you would recall odd numbers record from the left side of the brain and the even numbers record from the right side of the brain. On this EEG, there are a few things that are quite noticeable. You see these generalized bursts of delta and theta activity intermixed with sharp waves and spikes that last for approximately 4 seconds. And then you see a period that follows this generalized discharge with low amplitude suppressed activity that lasts for a duration of approximately 6 seconds. So this is a burst and this is suppression. This EEG pattern is called a burst suppression pattern. The burst suppression pattern can result from a number of different etiologies such as acute intoxication with medications, severe anoxic encephalopathy, effect of anesthesia and one of the rare epileptic encephalopathies which is called Otahara syndrome. The prognosis of a burst suppression pattern obviously depends on the underlying etiology. This particular patient was diagnosed with Otahara syndrome. One of the typical features of the burst suppression in this syndrome consists of bursts that last from 4 to 6 seconds. These have this kind of a morphology with delta and theta activity intermixed with spikes and sharp waves and periods of suppression lasting for approximately 4 to 6 seconds. Now I will show you an example of a person with burst suppression resulting from anoxic brain injury. So this particular patient had anoxic brain injury resulting from a cardiac arrest that lasted for 20 to 30 minutes. You see periods of suppression with amplitudes less than 5 microvolts in a generalized distribution. Then you see these bursts that last for approximately 2 to 4 seconds with variable amplitude in different locations. In In the absence of medication effect, a burst suppression pattern in the context of anoxic brain injury heralds a poor prognosis for functional recovery. If a burst suppression pattern results from medication intoxication, the patients may improve as the effect of the medication wears off. When burst suppression pattern is induced by anesthetics, for example, such as propofol, the duration of the burst and suppression depends on the amount of medication in the system. As you increase the dose of the propofol, for instance, the duration of the burst will reduce from, let's say, 4 seconds to 2 seconds and further reduce to 1 second and the intervals of suppression will increase. As you taper off the medication or the anesthetic agent, the periods of burst will increase and the periods of suppression will reduce. Here you see an example of a burst suppression pattern that has evolved into generalized periodic epileptiform discharges. In patients who have suffered a severe anoxic brain injury, as the depth of coma worsens, the periods of, the periods of suppression get more and more prolonged and the burst become shorter in duration. When you are consulted to see a patient with anoxic brain injury and come across a pattern that shows burst suppression, you have to be very careful before making conclusions related to prognosis. It is extremely important that you 
specifically review the patient's medications and identify if they are on any CNS depressant medication that can account for this kind of a pattern. Even in patients where those medications have been tapered off for a number of hours or days, you want to check their liver function tests and renal functions to ensure that the medication is still not in the system. This concludes the EEG reading rounds for today. For further reading, you can refer to Current Practice of Clinical Electroencephalography by Ebersol and Pedley and The Epilepsies by Peniatopoulos. I refer to those two books to make this presentation. Thank you and I'll see you at the next session.